Open your Bibles to John chapter 10, and we're going to look at verse 27, John chapter 10, verse 27. I'm going to piggyback on what we have been talking about on Wednesday nights and some things in my heart that I must share with you today, and uh, we're going to pick up here on the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that they're, they're the words of Jesus because they're written in red, red words win. If you can find some red words, you know that you have just won. If you can put these words in your mouth and in your heart, you are speaking life. And we see here in verse 27, our Lord Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This is a promise from the Good Shepherd saying that we, sheep, uh, in, in times throughout scriptures, there are agricultural references, and then there's uh, references that, you know, involve uh, architectural references in scripture. There's different type of references in scripture, and this time we're referenced as sheep who hear the voice of the shepherd. Jesus said that he is the good shepherd, and we are his sheep, and this is the will of God. This is the promise of God that we hear the voice of God, and we follow the voice of God that we hear. Uh, In this year, 2019, our year of light, it is our time to shine. It is our season. It is our opportunity. It is our moment. This is our year. We must be proficient in hearing the voice of God. We must be efficient when we hear the voice of God. And it's so important to me that I teach you on how to hear the voice of the Lord. Jesus says, it is my will that you hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. They hear, they hear. It doesn't say my sheep have heard my voice like it's past tense. Jesus says my sheep hear currently, present tense. My sheep hear my voice And I know them. Thank God that he knows each and every one of us. Glory to God. I know them and they follow me. In order for us to follow Jesus, we're going to have to hear his voice. If we don't hear his voice, we're unable to follow him. Because, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but Jesus is invisible. Did you not know that? I mean, we don't see him. So we're going to have to hear him. See, we all see in the, in the Old Testament, they had the, the, the fire by night and the, the cloud by day, right? And they fall, they were able to see what they're falling around. That's limiting. Did you hear me? That's limiting the cloud. If I don't see it, then I don't know where it's going. No, no, no. We, but, but I can always hear him, and he's not too far. I mean, he's right on the inside of each and every one of us. And if we're going to be able to follow him, we're going to have to hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. This is God's will for us to hear his voice and to know, to recognize, and to intimately understand what his voice sounds like. God's will for us to hear his voice. Uh, I told y'all uh, several weeks on a, on a Wednesday night that we were watching uh, some movie and some man said he heard from God and they started to rid- ridicule him. That you you heard from God? What? God spoke to you? Oh, you must be losing your mind. We should be people that hear from God all the time. We should be hearing his voice. We should be recognizing his voice, and we should be understanding what he's saying to us. Hallelujah. Because we were uh, created for communication purposes. This is why we're here, so he can communicate and fellowship with each, each and every one of us. And Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, in Romans 10, 17, turn there real quick. Romans 10, 17, Paul tells us here that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, present tense, And hearing, present tense, by the word of God. It doesn't say faith comes by heard. I heard that before, and that's how faith comes. No, no, no. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. No word, no faith. Now listen to this. No hearing of the word, no faith. Everything 
that we access in the kingdom of God comes by hearing what the good shepherd, the king of the kingdom is saying to us. We must hear what he's saying. And when we hear and recognize what we've heard, we've unlocked all of the access of the kingdom. Now, somebody might say it takes faith to access it, but faith comes by how? Hearing. We've got to hear first. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing the word of God. Faith will come when we hear and hear and hear the word of God. But if we back up real quick in Romans chapter 10 and look at verse 14, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear? Somebody say hear. Without a preacher. How shall they hear? Without, I want to hear from God. How shall you hear without a preacher? Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what the word of God, the written word of God is saying, you will be unfamiliar to the voice of God. If, if you're unfamiliar with listening to anointed preaching, you will be unfamiliar with the voice of God. How shall they hear without a preacher. Some of the some of the most profound things I've ever heard the, the the Spirit of God speak to me was while listening to anointed preaching, a preacher preaching the word, and the Lord said something. You know, you know, there's a there's a voice behind the voice. Does that make sense to you? I'm saying something, but the Holy Ghost is saying something too. And 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 I've heard the Spirit of God right behind some anointed preacher. I'm thinking that's exactly what I needed to hear. How shall you hear without a preacher? And there are certain postures and positions that we must be in in order to hear from God. And and, and most people don't want to be in these postures and positions. We found out in Bible study that uh, God wasn't speaking in 1 Samuel chapter 3. It said his voice was rare, but when he finally decided to speak, he spoke to Samuel. And what was Samuel doing? He was working 24 hours a day? No, he was lying down. He was in a posture and a position to hear, in a place of rest, to hear the voice of God. In Acts chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, they said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. That's a position to hear from God. Ministry to the Lord and fasting, saying, King's stomach is not going to rule me. I would rather hear from God than hear from my stomach. Amen. I know you got quiet. I know, I know Americans got quiet when they heard that because you think about eating right now, but I'm telling you, when you say no to your stomach, you say yes to the voice of God. Fasting. And so there's positions and postures we must be in to hear from God. And when we hear from God, one way to hear from God is coming to church and, and getting in the worship and, and participating, hearing the word of God. God is speaking behind that, and you're able to get a word from God. That's why it's imperative, uh, you know, that, man, I, I want to be where there's anointed word being spoken. I don't want to be by myself at home. I want to be where there's anointed word spoken so I can hear from God and get some answers that I need in my life. There are certain postures and positions that we can hear from God, and it's important that we hear from him. And despite or contrary to popular belief, God is not always talking. Oh, I know that ruins some of your theology, but how many of you know somebody that just talks so much? They just talk, 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 and you're like, oh, Lord, what they call, or if I run into them... Oh, man, I ran into a guy that this guy can talk, right? And and I ran into him in a grocery store, and he walked up to me. It was no greeting or anything. He walked up and said, my grandma went down to the house another day. It was like, <laughs> did, what, did we have this come? When did we have this come? He didn't greet. He jumped. He kept going. I said, brother, 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 brother. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I mean, he just, he, he liked to talk. And when I hear that God's always talking, I think about someone like him. I'm trying to get away from someone that's always talking, right? I'm trying to stay away. I mean, if he, he's wasting time, right? No, no, no. God, contrary to popularly, he's not always talking. Now, he's always willing to talk, but he's not always talking. Now, obviously, if you read the word of God, that's a posture and a position, too, to hear from God. Reading the written word of God, you place yourself in position to hear the voice behind the voice. But uh, uh, he's not always talking. You've got to be in position to hear. And when he does speak, you have to value it 
like you, like, like you fire your next breath. God just spoke to me. I need to write this down. I need to meditate on this. I need to remember this. Because the first sin occurred. You know, the first sin that, that occurred in Scripture uh, was when <laughs> God shows up to Eve and says, do this, do that, do this, and that. I'm sorry, the devil, forgive me. The devil shows up to Eve and says, do this or that, do this or that. And then the devil says, did God really say? Well, if you didn't write it down. And you're in the middle of a situation that's looking like it's horrible. And the devil comes and say, did God really say he's going to supply all your need according to his riches and glory? Well, I don't know. I don't know if he said that or not. I don't know. Now, all of a sudden, you don't know because you didn't write it down. But some, a brother like me, I didn't wrote it down, okay? So when something get tight or ain't right, best believe I go to my book. On November 16th, 2012, the Holy Ghost said... And I got it written down. So when the devil tells me, did God really say? Uh, yes, he did. This is when he said it because I wrote it down and I value his word. When you don't value his word, you will get position your play, yourself to be in a place that you, you won't hear anything else. I, I don't hear God. I, can't, I don't know what God's saying. God's saying. What's the last thing he told you to do? Well, I don't even know. Well, should he say any more? If you ain't done the last thing he told you to do? No, he doesn't have any more to say. Uh, do what I told you to do the last time. And you listen to him. And his voice is valuable to you. His voice is precious to you. And when we hear his voice, we are placing our posi- ourselves in position to follow him, to go where he goes. Anytime I'm at this place where I don't know what God wants me to do, I always ask myself, what is the last thing he told me to do? And I, I can recall it. And then I say, am I still doing it? If I've stopped, I need to get back on doing whatever the last thing he told me to do. You have placed yourself in position to hear from God. Now, does he love you? Yes. Does he, does he, does he care about you? Yes. But he, his, he don't waste words. Okay? He's not, he's not in the business of waiting. If he says something, I mean, on his level, if he says, let there be a three-headed dog show up at your house, guess what's going to happen? A three-headed dog is going to show up at your house. He's not wasting words. He's very precious in what he's saying to you, and you need to grab a hold of it and say, that's for me, and I'm going to remember it, and I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to do exactly what God's called me to do. If you believe that, somebody say amen. Amen. Now, the primary way that the Lord speaks to you, I'm going to go over three ways today that I believe will be beneficial to you. The primary way that the Lord speaks to you is what I would call the inward traffic light. (laughs) <laughs> the inner or the inward traffic light. Uh, most of the time we are led by an unction from the Lord and not a voice. Listen to me now. You, we're always looking for a voice. We're always looking for a voice. But most of the time we're led by an unction. Right here in your gut. I'm pointing to my stomach, your gut. You're led by some form of an unction. And uh, uh, that unction is like, is what I would call a traffic light, like a green light. You see a green light, you know, and if that means go. Um, we're, we're mostly led by a traffic. You see a yellow light, that means, you know, slow down, pause, yield. You see a red light, uh, that, all, uh, that means stop. And as we are walking around in life, we're not always hearing the voice of God, but we can always follow the unction, the inward traffic light that the Lord gives us. My, my wife and I were talking a, a number of years ago. I got in this, I got in a really bad car accident. A, a guy just came out, hit me, totaled the car, and, and I praise God, no broke, nothing. No, I had a big old lump on my head, but glory to God, that was it. Hallelujah. And um, she was, we, had, we were at the same place. We were both at the gym, and she she just felt like, I need to go to the store. And I said, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go home and change clothes. Well, if she would have came behind me, the, the accident was so bad that she would have been involved in that too, if she was right behind me. The guy just jumped out, and I think we all three would have been, our cars would have been towed out. If she, what, what did she follow? She just had an unction to go to the grocery store. I need to go to the grocery store before I go home. She felt good about it. That's the primary way that, that we're led by the Spirit of God's unction. 
on the inside of us. Or it could be a, a yellow light, like you meet someone and, and you got some reservations. You didn't hear a voice. You just felt an unction, like, mm, listen to those unctions. If you're spirit-filled, listen to those unctions it's because the Holy Spirit is leading you. Or if you hear, if you sense a red light, you better listen to that. Stop right now. Something ain't right. You don't, there, there's something that the Holy Spirit knows that your head does not know. Your head doesn't know everything, but the Spirit of God does. And if you got a red light, just stop it all together. Well, we need you to do this. Uh, I'm going to have to stop. I'm going to I'm gonna have to stop because I need to follow the unction of the Holy Ghost. Most of the time, listen to me, most of the time you have a green light until you have a yellow light or a red light. Are you, are you following me? Most of the time, you, you do what you, what you feel the most peace on the inside of you. You follow that on the inside until you sense a yellow light or a red light, then you stop. The Holy Ghost is trying to do something. He may not, he may not even speak a word. It's an unction. It's an unction. You will never regret anything that you do from your heart. You will regret some things that you that I should have done as my, my heart. When I say heart, I mean spirit, your newborn recreated spirit. Matter of fact, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says that we've been sanctified holy, spirit, soul, and body. We are a three-part being. We are a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. Say this out to me. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. You are a spirit. This is the part of you that is created just like God in the image of God. You are a spirit. Your spirit will live forever. You are a spirit. You have a soul, meaning that is your mind. Everyone has a soul. They have a mind. They have a will. And they have emotions. That's the place where reasoning takes place. And your thinking and your choosing and your decision making happens in that soulish realm. And you have a body. This body here, some in different colors, shapes, sizes, whatever. You live in this body. This body will, will not always be with you. But your spirit and soul will always be together. They're, they're, inter, they're interlocked. But your body's not going to always be with you. And all three of these have a voice. All three have a voice. The voice of your body is feeling. I feel this. I feel that. That is the voice of your body. The voice of your soul is reasoning. Trying to figure stuff out all the time. Got your, your Excel spreadsheet out. <laughs> you, you got the pros and cons, and, and you're, you're trying to figure it out. That's the voice of your soul trying to figure it out, and the voice of your spirit is conscience. Right there on the inside, like, mm, you know what? That's the right thing to do. The voice of your body is feeling. The voice of your soul is reasoning. The voice of your spirit is your conscience, and all three have a voice. I told the Wednesday night crowd this, that Stacy and I took some pastors out to eat, and they, I, they gave me the bill, and um, I, the bill was, was significantly less than it should be. And I knew the bill was going to be more, but it was less. The bill they gave me was less, and I looked at the receipt, and they, they gave me someone else's bill. It was someone else's bill on another table, but it was significantly less. I heard a voice say, just pay it and get on out of here as quick as you can. That's the, I heard a voice. I heard a voice. All voices are not from God, but I heard a voice. I could have said, that's the voice of God. Get on out of here. All voices are not from God, but I heard a voice. Get on out of here quickly. Go, pay it and go. I went back to the waitress. I said, ma'am, you gave me the wrong bill. She was like, oh my gosh. You know, she came to the right bill. She said, you know, you could have just paid it. You could have just paid it and left. We would have, we'd have known no difference. I said, no, I can't, I can't sow that kind of seed. Because I'm, I'm, I'm expecting great things to come back. I can't sow that kind of seed, you know. Somebody steal my, I get out there and somebody didn't stole my car or something. I can't, I can't sow that kind of seed. I didn't save $60 on this and car gone. No, I can't sow that kind of seed. I'm looking for big, big whopper chunk seed to come my way, praise the Lord. So I got, I got to do the right thing, but I, I heard a voice. I, but it wasn't the voice of God. You hear voices. Matter of fact, you hear three voices. Every time you go on, so you are hearing three voices. You're hearing the voice of your flesh, you're hearing the voice of your soul, and you're hearing the voice of God. And whatever you give the most attention to, it will be the loudest voice. 
And so we're always hearing voices, and that's why we have to make sure that what we are hearing lines up with the written word of God. And then you seek wise counsel, you know, other believers. You, you, each one of you should have a faith buddy. That, and let me call you. I heard something, and let that buddy say, nah, according to this scripture, that scripture, that's not right. That's not the voice of God. And, oh, I forgot. You also hear the voice of the enemy. I forgot about that one. You hear he's, he's speaking all the time, too. And so we're hearing voices. We are hearing voices, but we have to recognize the voice of God. And when we recognize the voice of God, then we'll know, we'll understand, and we will follow him, and we will fulfill everything he's asked us to do. But we are hearing voices. But we have to find out which one is the Lord. And the primary way we're led is by this inner traffic light. I I follow my inner traffic light all the time. If someone says, hey, should you do this? I check my heart. What do you mean by that? Should I do that? Yeah, I don't have a red, I don't have a yellow light, I don't have a red light, let's do it. Uh, should I do this? Well, I don't have a red light, let's do it. I have a yellow light about that, I pause, I ask more questions. Um, if I have a red light, I don't do it, I don't even entertain it. It's like, oh, you know, watch out for, you know, that man over there, he's trying to do something to you, whatever. I don't, you know what? I don't, I, don't, I don't even entertain it if there's a red light there. And so that's the primary way the Lord's leading us. It's not a voice. It's an unction. There is another way that the Lord leads us, and I want to I introduce these things because um, Peter prophesied in Acts chapter 2 that in, in the last days there will be dreams and there will be visions. And then go to Acts chapter 10 real quick. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10, I want to talk about this, and we're going to look at verse 8. Acts chapter 10, verse 8. This is a story of Cornelius, who's a centurion, which means he's a ruler over 100 Roman soldiers, and uh, he, he had a vision, and an angel spoke to him in this vision, and basically that sin for Peter. You know, angels can't preach the gospel to you. We're called to preach the gospel to you. So the angel said, sin Peter, and if we pick up here in verse, now let's look at verse 9. If we pick up in verse 9, it says, the next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Somebody say fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open, an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. He fell into a trance. Uh, Throughout the New Testament, we see this happen a few times where Someone fell into a trance, and I want to explain what that simply means. When you fall into a trance, that simply means that you become unaware of your physical surroundings, and you become more aware of spiritual things. So you're, you're, you're awake, but you're not necessarily focused on what's around you. You're more focused on the spirit realm, and anytime you fall into a trance, God is giving you instruction through that. It's it's for instructional purposes when there's a trance. He's trying to lead and guide you. Now, notice you're not asleep. You're awake. Peter was awake. He was praying, just sitting, and he fell into the trance. Notice it didn't say Peter asked for this. He didn't ask to fall into a trance. Notice he didn't say, if I can just have a vision or a dream or if I fall into a trance, I'll know what to do. That's not what he did. He was just awake. He was ready to eat. He said he was hungry. He was ready to eat. And he fell into a trance, meaning he was disconnected from the physical realm as such that that wasn't his focus. His focus was on what the Lord showed him. He fell into a trance. As I was praying about talking about this, the Lord reminded me that this situation happened to me one time. I was living in Fort Worth, Texas. I was single. I, uh, I was looking for direction. Where, what was my next step? Where, 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 what was I to do? Where was I to go? I had worked for Kenneth Copeland Ministries, but my time was up there. I thought I was going to be there forever. And my time was up. And I was looking for solutions, directions, guidance, and I jumped in my car and I parked into like this new area that they were building a strip mall, but no, as far as I knew, there were no stores there and there was just a parking lot. And I went and parked my car in this area. And for, for me, I hear from God in the car. For some reason, I can hear proficiently in the car. 
And my wife says it's the shower. You might be some other places far. But for me, if I'm in the car, man, it just seems like the Lord is speaking to me. And I, I knew that. So I went, parked my car in this, what it looks like a new development that didn't have any stores. So I parked my car there. And um, I sit there and I just roll the windows down. And I'm just sitting there. I got my Bible there, but I'm just sitting there. Lord, I just need some direction. I had to get away from everything. I had my phone off. I just need some guidance and some direction. And as I'm sitting there just praying and reading the Word, sitting there, it was about 4 o'clock. I went p.m. Um, I'm praying, reading the Word, praying, listening, sitting there, praying, reading the Word. This might sound radical to some. You mean you went and parked somewhere to pray? Yeah, I needed to hear from God. Praying, said it. All of a sudden, I became unaware of my physical surroundings. And the Spirit of the Lord, it was like he gave me a blueprint. And it was as real as I can even explain it to you of what my future was going to be. And he showed me, he said, if you stay in Fort Worth, he showed me the girl I was going to marry. I knew the girl. You, you will marry this girl. You will live in, on this side of town. And Fort Worth was a nice side of town, Fort Worth. And you will go to this church. And um, you would, I mean, I saw like, I saw kids. I saw all of this. This is will be your life if you stay in Fort Worth. He was like, okay. Yeah, I mean, that girl was cool, you know, and, and you know, it's okay. And, and I, I, I'm telling you, it was, it was as real as it was, this was real. And then he said, but if you go to Charlotte, because I was deciding to come to Charlotte or not. If you go to Charlotte and all I saw was bright light. That's all I saw was just bright light. If you stay, this will be your life. If you go, bright light. And, and then I don't know how long I was in that. I came out and I thought, why are all these people moving around? So I had parts somewhere and there was people walking around. I thought this was an abandoned shopping center. <laughs> Lo and behold, I had parked in front of a liquor store. <laughs> I didn't know it. And people were going in and out in the liquor store. And I was, <laughs> and I look, I, I look, I'm like, oh man. The, the, and they're looking at me probably like, what is he just sitting in the car? And I had parked in front of the liquor store. But I was unaware. I was, I was unaware of what was going on. But by the time I, I don't want this to sound spooky to you because it wasn't like I, you know, I was possessed or nothing. It was like I was more focused on that vision the Lord gave me than I was of my surroundings. And um, I, I ended up leaving there. I was there for three hours. I parked there at four, and I ended up leaving there sometime after seven. And, I, and, I saw, and when I left there, I knew, follow the light. Follow the light. Uh, if you stay, this will be your life. It'll be a good life. But if you go to Charlotte, bright light. And I was thinking about this. As I'm preparing to share this, I thought, man, 2019 is our year of light, you know, and I believe I'm, I believe I'm personally entering into something this year, and I followed the light. And so when Peter fell into a trance, if we continue to read this story, he has no idea what's going on there. He's seeing animals go up and down, and it, all of that is symbolism. He doesn't know what it is, but as soon as he comes out the trance, some men walk up to him, and they say, hey, we're looking for Peter, and all he knows is, I'm supposed to follow them. That's all he knows. I'm supposed to follow them, and he ends up following them. He ends up preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. They receive, they receive Jesus. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They got baptized in water, and now Peter understands that the gospel is not just for the Jews. It's also for the Gentiles. Aren't you glad it's also for the Gentiles? Praise God. And, but it was a trance that gave him instruction. It was he, he followed this vision that he had while he was awake. This is a way that the Lord can use you. Now, I'm preaching to a mature audience here because I don't want you to get spooky, woofy, goofy, silly. And I'm praying for a trance. I'm praying to have a trance because the devil can do it too. Okay. He can operate in that realm and, and say, yeah, look at this candy over here. And I'm supposed to leave my wife and I had a trance and go on over here. No, 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 no. You're not, you're not, you don't pray. There's no scripture reference to pray for a trance. There's no scripture references to believe God to have one. You just position yourself and let the Lord instruct you in any way that he sees 
fit. During this same period of time, I was in Fort Worth. The Lord reminded me about this because another way that he can lead you is through dreams. You can be led by God through a dream. And like I said, I don't want you to get spooky pooky on me and say, you know, you had some pizza late that night and you woke up and the dream said, you know, I ain't supposed to give no more. You know, God said, don't give no more, nothing more. Giving is, giving is of the past. I'm not supposed to. No, no, because the enemy, the enemy can come in with that too. So you have to uh, bounce everything you have off of scripture. And at this particular time, I used to be a youth minister. And so I was, a, a, you know, I would speak different youth groups and I led some youth groups and I got called for an interview at a fairly large church in another city of Texas. And all they, man, they had the facilities, they had the, they had the parental involvement that make a youth group great, you know, and all they needed was me. You know what I mean? They needed a youth pastor to come in and to lead them. And um, I went, flew out there, spoke, met with the pastor. We had a great time. We was, we was, uh, we, we, we connected. Great man of God. I enjoyed it. And he said, let's just go home and pray. And then in a few days, we'll come back together and see if this is what God wants. I said, that's great. And we get there, uh, you know, I get home, whatever. I feel great about it. I'm, I'm like, this is the job. I'm going to take this job. And I, I go to sleep that night and lo and behold, I have a dream. And this dream was so real. Uh, have you, how many have just had just a, just a dream that just was real? This dream was so real. I, it was like I felt uh, every emotion in the dream. It was just, it was real. And all a dream is is, is a succession of images and, and while you're sleeping and, and emotions that, that are collided together while, while you're going. But the Lord can speak through that when you're in a position of rest. And he's got to get some instruction to you. Listen, these, when he speaks to you in, in a trance or a dream, it's for instruction. It's not to entertain you, okay? It's instructional purposes. There's a reason. And I, I laid down for this dream. I mean, I laid down and I had this dream. And, and in the dream, I had, I had went back to the church and I met with the pastor. And he had a lady that was preaching that that night to the youth, and the place was packed full of young people, and this lady was preaching, and man, she was doing a great job. And I was there. I was on the front row, because in the dream, I was going to tell the pastor, we need to, I need to, you know, we're going to take the job. I've got the job, but she's a guest speaker in the dream, you know, and so she's preaching, and it's great, and people are excited, and it's awesome, and I walk back to his office, and he walks in there, and I say, pastor, this isn't a dream. I say, pastor, this, this job is not mine. It's this lady's job. You, you know, let's just, let's not, I, you know, we're people of no repit. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. You don't get your feelings hurt either. I'm not going to take the job. This lady, she's clearly the one to take it. Now, this is, you know, a dream. I wake up out of a dream and it's like, oh, my gosh, that's, that's the realest dream I've ever had. So the next day the pastor called me and he said, um, so what do you think? You know, we've been talking about it, thinking about it. What do you think? I said, Pastor, I said, I hope this doesn't sound weird to you. But, but I had a dream. <laughs> you know, I'm all like, oh, I hope he doesn't think I'm crazy. I had a dream. And in the dream, there was this lady, and I told him the story, and she was preaching. And I told you I was in your office, and I said, listen, I'm not the one to take the job. You got to give this job to this lady. She's the one that's going to take this youth group further than he can. And he's listening to me. And I'm thinking the whole time while he's listening, he thinks I'm a fruity cake. You know, and he says, and he pauses. He says, um, Pastor, is what he called me to. He said, Pastor, he said, um, this is interesting. I said, why, sir? He said, I just got an application from a lady just, just yesterday applying for the youth pastor job. And I wasn't going to pursue it because you and I were having such a good time. But now that you say that, I'm going to pursue this opportunity with this lady. And, you know, a, a, you know, a lady youth pastor, is that's, that's not real famous. You know, there's not a lot of lady youth pastors. And he got an opportunity for it. And we stayed in touch. I turned it down. At that moment, I said, I'm going to turn down the, the, the job. I, I, it's not for me. And uh, we stayed in touch. And a few weeks later, he called me up. He said, man, I hired her. And she's doing an excellent job getting everything going. I mean, God led me through a dream. A dream, that, a dream that was real, and he gave me instruction, turn down that job through a dream. God has many ways to lead you. 
He led me to Charlotte through a trance, meaning I was wide awake. And I were no longer was I concerned about my surroundings. I was caught up in this vision that the Lord had given me. It was like a, like a movie. And this would be your life. And he led me, follow the bright light. Didn't tell me everything that I would have to encounter, but follow the bright light. Then the dream. He led me to turn down this particular position, and lo and behold, the pastor hired a lady, and I saw the lady and everything in the dream. It was so real. I saw her and everything, and he led, he led me that direction. And then I knew then, you know, I'm not supposed to take that youth pastor job. I'm not supposed to stay in Fort Worth. I think I'm supposed to go to Charlotte. I, I come to Charlotte in 2004. Come out here. Single man. Come out here to Charlotte. And... Uh, I'm, I'm here, and I'm, Lord, I had, no, I had no job when I came out here. I had no job. I had no, uh, no friends. I knew one person. I knew my pastor. I knew a, a friend of mine had started a church in Charlotte, and I said, man, I'm just going to come help him. That's it. I'm going to come help him. I had nowhere to live, no job, nothing. And I get out here, and I'm like, I'm just... I'm going to be led by the Spirit. Lord, what do you want me to do? And then what does that mean? Man, put yourself in position to hear. I got a green light unless he gives me a yellow light and a red light, whatever he says. So my first position, we go, I need a job. I ain't ain't one of them lazy dudes that sit around, you know, I need to to put my hand to something because I believe that it's easier to get a job when you have a job. And so I need a job. I need a job. Panera called me. We pay you eight dollars an hour. I ain't made eight dollars an hour since I was, you know, twenty-one. I'm twenty-six years old, twenty-seven. Eight dollars an hour. Spirit of God, got a green light unless I get a yellow light or red light. I didn't hear a voice. Matter of fact, I never heard a voice to tell me to come to Charlotte. I never heard a voice. It was all about the Spirit, seeing that trance, understanding that dream. I never heard the Lord say, "Go to Charlotte," and so. I'm listening to my heart, and I don't have a red light. They're offering $8 an hour. What am I doing? Sitting around on my, on my hands. That's all I'm doing. I had an apartment. How do I have an apartment? I still don't know how I got that apartment without any reference of work, um, but they gave it to me, and man, take the Panera job, $8 an hour. I, I still, you guys know math, right? It don't add up. You're making rent payment and, and, you know, and all the payments that you can make. It wasn't adding up. I was, I was tithing as unto the Lord. I was sowing. And I stopped even crunching the numbers on the calculator because they, they, were not, they were not making sense. But the Lord was providing. I worked for Panera. Had a, had a bad attitude. Because I ain't come out here to work at no Panera well, I ain't why I'm supposed to be out here, and it wasn't until the Lord. I'm ministering to somebody today. It wasn't until the Lord told me, you better commit to work here forever. Commit to work here forever. If that's my will for you, commit to work here forever. And it wasn't until I said, I said out my mouth, I commit to work here forever. Next day, I get a call from Wachovia Bank. They're, they're hiring. Entry-level job. Hey, I'm going to go interview. We talked about this on Wednesday night. Uh, Man looks at the outward appearance, right? But God looks at the heart. And God looks at the heart, that's true. But man looks at the outward appearance, that's also true. How you look on the outside, somebody looking at you. And they're judging you. And you you cannot get a job based on how you look on the outside. You cannot get whatever you need based on how you look. So my dad always taught me. You may not be the most qualified, but you can be the best dressed. I showed up at that interview. I wasn't the most qualified, but I showed up was the best dressed. I showed up. They asked me questions, and I'm answering the questions. Next thing I know, I'm sitting there thinking. And then when I left, they were, you know, they kind of gave, well, we'll, we'll be in contact. I thought, man, I don't have the credentials to have this corporate America job. I'm just a dude that worked in ministry, you know, and they, you know, I'm going for this job. I ain't got, I get a call three or four days later that says, man, we want to give you the job. Hallelujah. I'm being led by the spirit. I'm being led. Then I get, I'm working at this job and 
a lady comes over to me and she says, um, that my, my, my position is hiring. And you, you would be good for this position. Well, it was, in, it was in the sales. I'm not a salesman. That's what I told myself. I'm not a salesman. I don't want to sell nothing. I just want to take these calls, okay, you know, and, and do what I do. And she was like, you'd be really good. And my initial level job was $28,000. That was the first job. It was $28,000. And, and, you know, she began to talk. And she said, you know, you can make $50,000. Well, I'm interested now. <laughs> okay, tell me how are we going to do that? She said, well, I put a bug into my boss. Because I think you'll be great at my job. And the whole time, I'm not a salesman. I'm not a salesman. And I check in my heart. Am I supposed to do this? And I got a green light. I got a green light. Go for it. Go for it. And I'm checking my heart. I, I go to the interview. I sit down in the interview. Um, they they asking me questions. I don't even know what they're talking about. Okay? I mean, it was well over my head. Okay? I don't know what they're talking about. I get done. With the interview, I do remember this on Jersey Sunday. I can say this: the man in the interview said, "Who's your favorite NFL team?" That was the interview question. I said, "The Dallas Cowboys." Now, fast forward, he—I still talk to him today. He is a Dallas Cowboys fan, so <laughs> it pays to be a Cowboys fan. <laughs> yeah, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> no, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> so, so I go, I go in. The interview. I, I, I find out later that I don't get the job. No, I'm like, why did this lady come over here and tell me that she think I'd be good? She told her boss, and I don't even get the job. They don't give it to me. Well, I guess I'll stay where I'm at. I go outside. I find a wallet just laying around outside. You know, I'm just, I'm moving where the Spirit of God's telling me to move. Go where he's telling me to go. There's a wallet outside. I see it. I grab it. I go up in the elevator, the elevator's packed, go up in the elevator, I come out the elevator, I hand it to the security desk, say, I found this wallet outside, they open it up, there's money just falling, cash falling out the wallet. This man's around me, he, he, you know, he's looking, you know, okay, I go back to my seat, all of a sudden, three managers come over, great job, oh, that's awesome, integrity, character, this is what we're looking for, what in the world are y'all talking about? Oh, man, awesome job. Okay, please tell me what you're talking about. You turned that wallet in. How in the world? Are y'all spying on me? How did y'all know that? The man in the elevator emailed us, found out who you were, emailed us, and told us that you turned in a wallet that had cash in it. And the man was just thought the best of you for doing this. And they were patting me on the back. I get a call. Now, remember, I just didn't get a job. I get a call a few days later saying, we want to offer you the job that they didn't give me. We want to offer you the job. We don't want to interview anymore. We just want to offer you the job. Okay? What happened? Well, the man that saw me on the elevator was the boss of that department and said, we can train a guy like him. We don't need him to be trained. We can train him. What we're looking for is integrity and character, and he's got it. Here I am, just following the Holy Ghost, going to take a break outside because I felt good about going outside to take a break, finding a wallet, and the Lord using that to get me promoted. Did well in that position. God offered another position, praise God. And this, this other position, just hearing from God, go for it. Be the best dressed. <laughs> That's all I can remember. Just be the best dressed. I mean, I'm not the most qualified, but I can be the best dressed. I go. And now this position was really asking questions that I had. No, I would have to ask them, hey, guys, can you rephrase the question? No, no. I said, listen, I, I, don't, even, I, I don't even understand that. Can, can we dumb it down just a little bit so I know what you're talking about? Because I didn't want to answer something dumb. That's not what they, Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is what I'm asking. Oh, I can answer that question, so on and so forth. I leave there. Just, just following the Holy Ghost. Leave there. I get a call a few days later. Man, we want to offer you this job. Hallelujah. Oh, the Holy Ghost just reminded me. There's one thing I will tell you. This other job was paying over $100,000 that they offered me. Now, I'm not qualified. This other job is going to pay over $100,000. I forgot to tell you this part. The Spirit of God told me to start. Now, I heard a voice this time. Start. 
start sitting with the people in that job. When your shift is over, just go over there and sit with them. Just see what they're doing. I knew a guy over there. I just would go in and sit with him. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30. Just sit with him. What are y'all doing over here? Help me, you know, help me understand what I'm doing. What y'all are doing? Six, seven months later, oh, they need a position over there. Who do you think they're going to hire? The man that went over there to sit, just to learn it. I, wasn't, I couldn't even answer the interview questions, most of them. But the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, just start sitting with them. You ain't got nothing else to do. Go over there and sit down and find out what they're doing over there. Praise God. Did that. And then when they needed to hire someone, they hired me. Praise God. That one paid a lot of money. And what am I saying to you? Just following the inward premonition that you have on the inside. Not always necessarily seeking a voice. But just following that green light. Do I have a green light? I got a green light about that. Do, oh, there's a red light. There's a yellow light. Ooh, I better, I better, I better be, be, be careful there. Following the, the Holy Ghost, he will lead you in every area of your life. If it's a decision that you need to make, ask yourself, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do. And I'm going to hear exactly what you want, but I feel good, or let me say it this way, I sense, that's better than feel, I sense that what I should do is this. And you go, you go towards that direction, and then you, you let the Lord lead you. See, a car that is moving is easier to steer than one that is just sitting still. You just start moving. I'm going to go in this direction. And let the Lord tell you that's not the direction. He'll tell you how through, through that, that inward traffic light or a voice or a trance or a dream or vision. He'll tell you. And you just say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow. The, I think this is the best thing I'm supposed to do. And you do it and let him tell you. Let him, let him, let him show you which way you go. If you commit to hearing the voice of God and doing what the Lord tells you to do, he, listen to me, he will make sure you prosper and have good success. Everybody in here wants prosperity and good success. He'll make sure if you follow what the Lord's telling you to do. I've endeavored, my life, I've endeavored to hear from God and to do what he tells me to do. I'm the type of guy that would rather move too slow than too fast. Uh, what do you mean by that? I would rather know that I heard from the Lord, not sit around on my hands and knees, but know that I, 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 I know that I feel good about this direction. And you go that direction and let the Lord steer you. And you just keep hearing and you keep hearing and you keep hearing and you keep hearing and you keep hearing. You keep hearing. I said this on Wednesday night and I'll conclude with this. We talked about first, uh, we talked about Samuel. And when the Lord told Samuel, y'all remember the story? He told Samuel to go to Jesse's house and anoint one of his sons as king. And Jesse brings seven sons and goes to each son. And this must be the one. The Lord said, no. This must be the one. The Lord said, no. This must be the one. No, this one. He got down to the seventh one and said, I miss God. Is that what he said? No. He got down to seven and said, there must be more children. Yeah, there's another one out there in the field. Bring him in. My man, the Lord said, this is the one. What, why didn't the Lord tell Samuel, go down to Bethlehem, find Jesse. David is his son. Go and anoint David. Why didn't he just tell him exactly what to do? Because God is interested in us hearing his voice time and time and time and time again, following his direction Time and time again, and each time, Samuel had to hear his voice. Is this the one? Mm, got a red light about him. Is this the one? Uh, another red light. Oh, red light, red light. Uh, it's got to be another one. We, we have to be. It'd be easy if the Lord told us, uh, this time next year, you're going to be working at the White House, and you're going to you know, be the next president, and that'll be great. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We'll quit our jobs. All of us will quit right now. 
And why, because next year, this time, I'm going to be the president of the United States, or whatever the case may be. That, that, that'll be great. But that's not how the Lord leads us. He doesn't always tell you the end from the beginning. He's going to tell you the next step. Well, I don't know what the Lord wants me to do in my future. I know what he wants you to do tomorrow. Get up and go to work. I know that's what he wants. So you know, you know one thing, right? I don't know what my future holds. Uh, Monday morning says go to work and be there on time and give it your best. Amen. We're trying to know what the end from the beginning. All we need to really know is what's, what does tomorrow hold? What does today hold? What's, listen to this question. What's the best decision for today? That, that's what you, we think, we're thinking so down the road today. What's the, what's the best decision for today? Whenever you're at a crossroads, I'll end with this. I got a lot in my heart, but I'll, I'll stop. Whenever you're at a crossroads, ask yourself this question as well. If I look at my past, in light of my past, if I take a look at my past, if I take a look at my current situation, if I take a look at my future, my future goals and dreams, ask yourself this question. What's the wise thing to do? What's the wise thing to do? When you're at a crossroads, notice I didn't say what's the right thing to do or what's the wrong thing to do. I said what's the wise thing to do? If I take a look at my past, if I look at my current situation, my future hopes and dreams, what's the wise thing to do? And when you seek wisdom, it's the principal thing. Amen? It's the principal thing. You're, you run right into what the Lord wants you to do.